It's Brad's Laboratory. Okay, today we're modifying the Gold Miner Spiral Gold Panning Machine. This little beauty can find the gold in your pay dirt. We spent a day up uh, gold panning up at Fair Play. Um, the, you can buy a permit from the city to uh, allow you to dig for gold there on the on the creek, and uh, we did that. And I guess the Hoffmans are up uh, kind of north of there, and they're stirring up a lot of a lot of gold in the uh, in the creek below them. So, so we did that, and we came home with some pay dirt. And we uh, ran it through this uh, spiral gold panning machine. As you can see it's uh, working pretty good. Here it's not working quite right. Things aren't adjusted quite right. I quickly uh, fix that here in a little bit. But you'll see a lot of the gold just climbs right up this thing and slides out the back into a little uh, catch bucket in the back. This thing works great for... Uh, for getting the gold out easily and quickly of uh, pay dirt. So, you know, you just spoon it in a little bit at a time and away you go. You can see the dirt climbing, sticking to the sides as it goes around the top. That's not, it's not adjusted right. So I'm going to tweak it here in a second. And I just, you know, tweak the, uh, the flow of the, uh, one of the copper tubes and I get that, get that working better. So there, now it's working like it should. So you don't have that dirt going up over top. So just finishing up the pan here. You can dump the stuff in dry or wet. I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on that. I think if it's wet, you don't get that gold that floats so much. Whereas uh, if it's dry, you might get a little some of the flower gold that that floats on top of the water and maybe doesn't make it through the center. Now I'm just going to rinse out the pan into it because uh, the gold's going to be at the bottom of that pan anyway. So if I didn't get it with the scoop, uh, I'm going to get it now. But uh, this thing is uh, pretty interesting to watch and uh, pretty hypnotic. So one more rinse of the pan and I think we can, uh, can call her done. So the reason one thing I'm going to be modifying this is we normally use this in the house. We'll go out to the to the mountains and we'll uh, bring back some, some what we think is pay dirt. I mean, you know, we dig behind a big rock in a stream and typically that's where the gold will collect. It's like a natural ripple in the stream. And so you dig there and you and then you uh, pan that down and then you bring that which you pan down at home and we run it through this thing. So typically this is not out in the field, it's usually in our house or in our garage. So here I am, I'm going to show you the, the gold. You can start to see a little above it. There's uh, some black sand and, and some gold. and There's a close-up with the iPhone showing the gold. So quite a bit of gold for, uh, you know, a day's worth of work. Here's how this thing works. There's an on-off switch, and then there's a wire that feeds the uh, pump in the bottom. And that's just on banana plugs, so you can take that loose. The bucket hangs on that little brass hook, but here's the, here's the problem with it. It's made the, the plug into your battery, clamp onto your battery clamps on your car, and, and you prospect out of your car. So I just have it hooked to a battery charger here, and that's not like super safe because those leads could touch together. So I'm going to check it and see uh, how much current it's drawing. Looks like it's drawing about 1.8 amps. That's a pretty respectable amount of current between the motor and the uh, pump. 
but you know the battery battery charger seems to run it okay but i'm gonna look around and see if i can't find a uh a better one there's the 12 volt 2 amp so that would just barely do it i'm gonna see if i can't find something bigger this one i think is a 19 and a half volt at 4.62 amps so that's a little too much voltage although i love the current and this one's 12 volt 1 amp so that's too small wouldn't run it and then finally i dig along i come across a 12 volt 3 amp that should be just fine for running that give me an amp overhead here i have it hooked up and i got everything running it's running at 1.76 amps instead of 1.8 that it was running before i ordered some connectors off amazon i didn't particularly like these connectors they were kind of cheap and the uh the pins kind of floated around in them it was, they weren't easy to make together but they were uh, somewhat watertight i got like a 10 pack or something here so i need one of one type to go to the unit and then i'm gonna cut the wiring going to the unit i'm gonna put a plug on the uh, battery cl clamp side and a matching plug on the unit side so i can either use it in the field with the battery clamps or i can plug in the power supply and use that in the house which is probably how it's mostly going to get used Here I am just digging through my drawer of crimpers to see if I can find a crimper that would crimp these connectors I bought off Amazon. This one uh, looks to be the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I kind of have a fetish for crimpers, so I have quite a few of them, but I think that's the one that's going to do the job. Everything else was kind of too small. So those banana jacks there go to the pump. There's your on off switch and your motors on the one side and it's just kind of how it works. We're gonna go ahead and cut this lead. Probably closer towards the battery clamps. Just a quick cut, and then we'll start working on this. Let's put the Siamese cable down the middle there a little bit. We'll strip it and get those pins crimped on there. So the little rubber grommet thing doesn't fit on there because the uh, jacket on this cable is too fat. So I could not get that on there correctly. So I'm going to have to improvise and I'll just slice it with an exacto knife and put it in after the fact. Typically if it will fit over the insulation of the cable... I would have put it on now, but since it wouldn't, I'll just slice it and put them on after the fact, like I just did. Then those get jammed in there, and I just stuff those in there. Here I'm using the tip of my needle nose, but later on I moved to a, a flathead screwdriver, which worked a lot better. So I just didn't have one handy, so I wasn't using one. Get it all together and snap it down. Now I'm checking to see which side is ground, and then... I'm going to mark the side that's not ground. Mark the positive side because I have some red tape here. Now I know that's positive so I can keep my, my positive and negative lead together. Or so I know which one's which and I can line them up. Here I am. I'm crimping on uh, pins onto the uh, battery clamp leads. So I'll just keep these with the unit. And just in case we ever go out to the field, we'll use them. Figure out, make sure I got the red going to the right place. I trim those and stuff them in there with a screwdriver. That worked a lot better. And then snap the back shell down. And we're done.
and yes it does fit together and like i said the, the connectors are a little cheap they kind of the pins kind of wobble around in there so it's hard to get them made it up it takes a little bit of trying but eventually you get it and it snaps together and that green rubber seals up the connector so you don't have to worry about getting water in it So that works. That one's ready to go. And now we're going to do the power supply side. So on this side, the uh, little rubber things fit fine over the insulation. So crimp that. Did the other one too. Uh, figure out which side's positive and I mark it with some uh, red tape there. Open up the connector. This connector gave me a little bit of trouble for some reason, but I got it finally, and I got it lined up and got the red and the red going to the red and the black going to the black, and we got everything fired up. I had to tweak these uh, pins a little bit. Then it made it up, and I got her done. Let's see, plug her in. Let's see. Turn her on, and the motor's spinning, so it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Since I added on the workbench, I figured I would uh, go ahead and open it up just to see what was on the inside. I don't expect to see too much, really. I expect to see uh, power coming into the switch, through the fuse, and then to the banana jacks and the motor at, probably at the same time. And so there it is. I was kind of expecting to see like a chain drive or something, but it's just big plastic gear. So, you know, direct drive. So can't go wrong there. Yeah, pretty much like I guess the wiring was the way I guess the positive lead comes in, goes through the fuse, through the switch to the uh, red banana jack and also to the motor and then the negative side of the motor goes to the black banana jack and out through the black. Hi, Brad here. I just wanted to take a second and personally thank you for watching my video. If you could uh, click the subscribe button down here, I'd appreciate it. I also selected uh, another follow-up video for you up here. And, uh, and if you could give me a like, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.